Good evening. Welcome to the Green Wilson's introduction and welcome to high school. Tonight we'll be looking at some of the principles and what you can expect coming into grade nine at Kareem Wilson Secondary School. We're thrilled to have you here tonight. And we know that we have all of our feeder school students and their families with them, as well as perhaps some new students coming into our area. So welcome all of you. I, tonight, uh, I'll introduce myself first. I'm Jennifer Coleman. I'm the principal at Kareem Wilson Secondary School. And we have uh, our, a number of other staff members with us tonight. I'll introduce them shortly. Those are our department heads and our vice principal and some of our teachers who are active participants in what we do here every, every day, every year. Uh, I will start off with a reminder for you that there is an opportunity for you to ask questions as we go through this presentation. Although we are on YouTube and you can't go directly in that format, if you want to ask a question specifically, head back to the Kareen Wilson website. There is a link right there and you can populate your question into the form and we will be monitoring that all through the night. When we get to the end of the presentation tonight, we will look at those questions and answer any that have come up. In addition, once we have completed our presentation, we will be following up with a second form that if you have some additional questions, you can fill those out and we'll follow up with a uh, FAQ that will be sent out to all the feeder schools to be shared with all of you. So once again, welcome. Those are just the technical parts. We're gonna cross our fingers that all of our, all of our technical issues have been resolved and we can go smoothly through the night. So um, again, and welcome and let's go. We'll start off tonight with our land acknowledgement. We acknowledge that our learning is taking place on unceded and unsurrendered Algonquin territory. We thank the Algonquin Nation for hosting us and recognize their enduring presence on this land. This message of acknowledgement and gratitude is really very much an authentic piece at Kareem Wilson. If you know where we are situated, we are on beautiful green space that is minutes away from the river. So having a land acknowledgement seems incredibly appropriate, appropriate for our site. The land becomes part of our culture, our curriculum, and our planning at CW. I'd like to introduce, this is our director from the OCDSB, Camille Williams-Taylor, and she has a video introduction and welcome for you tonight. Starting high school is a significant milestone in a young person's journey in education. It is the time where young people can explore their interests, build on their talents, and start to envision their pathway into adulthood. The Ottawa Carleton District School Board is committed to providing a dynamic, engaging, and inclusive school experience where all students are welcome and can be successful through a robust array of exciting and supportive programs and experiences. While there are certain courses that students are required to take, there are also many options for study that students can choose depending on their interests and their plans beyond high school. We know that some students thrive in the classroom, others achieve greater success in experiential learning opportunities or in virtual spaces. In the OCDSB high schools, we work hard to help students and their families to create a learning path that works well for each student. As a district, we are committed to student achievement, well-being, and student voice through inclusive, equitable, and meaningful programs that provide students many opportunities for success. Our high schools are a place where students can come to school be who they are, and discover who they can become. This is the time to thrive. Welcome. So thank you to Ms. Camille Williams-Taylor for that message, and we echo that. It is a time to thrive, and we are, you have a wonderful team at CW that will help your students achieve that success. So tonight we'll start off, I'd like to introduce the staff that are joining me tonight. Um, first off, you can't see him. He, he is behind the scenes doing all the clicking and the tech support, but I will start with a, a huge acknowledgement and appreciation for Jason Kirby. Um, like I said, he we, we wouldn't be able to manage this evening tonight without him pulling all the strings and, and doing what he's doing behind the scenes. So I'll talk about him a little bit later, but thank you, Jason. Um, again, I am Jennifer Coleman. I'm the principal at Kareem Wilson. 
and the vice principal is Lori LaBelle. Good evening, everyone. Nice to have everyone join us. Heather Mawinney is our school council chair. School council meets once every month to look at how they can support our CW team. So also tonight we have a number of all of our department heads actually, um, James Cleveland, and I'll let Mr. Cleveland introduce his department. Hello everyone, I'm uh, the head of uh, arts and technology. Chantal Coulomb. Good evening everyone, I'm the head of the language department. Alison Dewar. Hello, everyone. I'm the head of sciences. Ashley Heemstra. Hello, I'm the head of English, history, and social studies. Lynn Miller. Hello, I'm the head of mathematics. Joanne Muir. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Joanne Muir, and I'm the head of special education, and that includes uh, our developmentally delayed students, ASD, and general population. Thank you. Russell Wolf. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us this evening. Russell is the head of student services, and he works with the students that have the last names from L to Z. And again, I mentioned Jason Kirby. Uh, you won't see Jason's face, but he can say hello. everyone and welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us this evening. So thank you team for coming tonight and sharing what we do at, at CW. And again, welcome to all of you. So we're gonna go through a number of, of the pieces that um, are priorities and commitments from the OCDSB. And they are certainly echoed in the actions at Kareem Wilson. So the primary piece being that Kareem Wilson is a place for, has a place for every student, and there is a space for everyone where everyone belongs. We want to work towards having your student have a place where they can be seen, heard, and know that they matter. We have a strong commitment to human rights, equity, and inclusion, and always looking at dismantling the barriers to achieving student success. And that means having a welcoming and safe space at school where students have a voice and they can express what they need, and we are receptive to those needs and can put an action plan in place. And again, these, I will mention that I know that these slides, there's a lot of information on these slides. And please know that when we have completed our presentation tonight, that you will be able to access this recording to go through it at your leisure. And if you want to go back to an individual slide, you can certainly do that and read uh, more of the in-depth information. We're providing an overview tonight, but it's certainly there for you to view. So uh, the, the OCDSB has identified um, a roadmap, a roadmap forward that is a focus on equity and inclusion. And one of the pieces, it is the OCDSB's Indigenous Equity and Human Rights Roadmap. There is a link in one of the slides that you can take a look at it. So this roadmap has identified and established our pathway forward as we commit to equity. The next few slides that we're going to look at actually outline some of the areas of focus and the board commitments are highlighted. The first one that we will really examine in depth is the Indigenous education. And we wanna ensure that our Indigenous students have support opportunities and resources so that they're able to achieve academic success and personal well-being. We also wanna make sure that all of our students have an understanding of our Indigenous histories, traditions, and contemporary realities. That is a board priority, it's a CW priority. It makes us strong Canadian citizens, and it also makes us critical thinkers and learners. At CW in particular, how does that translate into what we do for Indigenous voices? So at CW, we offer the grade 11 English course as Indigenous Voices, and that is pretty much translated across to all schools in the OCDSB. So this course specifically focuses and explores Indigenous voices and important societal issues. We're looking at enhancing understandings of the impact of colonization on cultures and the importance of reconciliation. So beyond the grade 10 history course, it looks as Indigenous peoples as strong voices in our community and our cultures and our history. And again, that, that makes us stronger Canadian citizens. 
we are part of our goal is our exit outcomes at, at uh, the OCDSB and responsible citizenship is certainly one of those. Our roadmap and our journey for equity continues with supporting black, minoritized and two SLGBTQ plus students. We have, we're working towards and making sure that your students have access, the opportunity and ability for successful outcomes for black, minoritized and two SLGBTQ plus students. We wanna make sure that all students are treated with dignity and respect, regardless of backgrounds, cultures, religious, um, where, where our students come from. So some of the opportunities that we offer are again, are listed in that slide on the left. And just to name a few, we have black graduation coaches, the Black Youth Forum, Social Diversity Clubs, Rainbow Youth Forums, all of those to recognize and celebrate our diverse students coming into our board and our school. And again, how does that translate into at, at CW? We are really proud of the work that we're, we have done. And um, this is a grassroots club that has started is race relations. And it has really grown from a need that has been expressed through student voice. Students came to us and stated that they knew that there was perhaps areas where we could grow and learn and develop together. So that's where the birth of this group has come from. And it was, this group came as a way to highlight issues of race and to create a safe environment where all students can have a voice while also raising awareness about a variety of issues. They're called the race relations team, but they've also branded themselves as the idea team, idea standing for inclusion, diversity, equity, and allies. So a very, very powerful group. This, uh, this team is meeting bi-weekly. They're having, and that's all being done virtually at this point. They are having guest speakers from inside of our community and beyond, looking at school initiatives, and the real focus is on constructive educational awareness as we work towards our cultural proficiency, um, growth and goals as we do that together. In addition, we have the Rainbow Youth Group and the Rainbow Youth Group is for students who identify as lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, uh, LGBTQ and or gender questioning. And we also have students who don't necessarily identify but who are allies to this community. Again, we're creating a safe space and providing opportunities for our students to participate in things such as the Rainbow Youth Forum, um, which again provides opportunities for further exploration and development. And finally on our pathway, although there are many, many more, we've just highlighted a few tonight, um, is our commitment to equity is also on, we've got two other additional pieces, the ESL and ELD and the English as a second language or English literacy development programs are for families and students who are newcomers to Canada. And they work through the multicultural liaison officers and the family reception centers, working towards building their English language skills to a credit level that works towards a diploma. So we will, if you are one of those students who need support, I'm sure you have, will have been connected through your family reception center already and we will continue that work as you enter into high school. And the final area that we will showcase tonight is our students with special education needs. And again, that pretty much translates into an extension of what's happening at elementary schools. So students with special education, most of them have an individual education plan, an IEP that follows them from grade eight. And what we do as you enter into high school is we work with a transition team. And that means our uh, guidance counselors, our learning support teacher, our student success teachers, and our administration will meet with the grade eight um, learning resource teacher and the grade eight teacher to develop a transition plan or how the students can successfully move into high school. And that will include uh, things such as uh, adaptive equipment that will move over with you, Perhaps it is a um, suggestions and help on making appropriate course selections. It could also be a learning strats course to start off grade nine, which will help you with time management organization and preparing. So all of those things will be a part of that transition. And if you're looking for more information on that, we're encouraging you to reach back to your grade eight teacher and your learning resource teacher 
to ask further questions. And you're also encouraged to contact us at Kareem Wilson to speak to one of the guidance counselors or to Joanne Muir. And her, her contact information was in one of the earlier slides. And Joanne is our learning support teacher and in charge of special education and a wonderful, wonderful resource for all of our students. So thank you for that. I know that was a lot of information we're sharing on our OCDSB journey towards equity and making sure that all students have a place at Kareem Wilson. And after being here for three years, I can absolutely attest to that too. Every student has a place and this is a place where we know your students will be happy, healthy and successful. So I'm gonna turn it over now to Vice Principal Lori LaBelle to continue with the presentation. Perfect, thank you, Ms. Coleman. So as um, we mentioned, there's a lot of opportunities for our, your students once they come to us at Kareen Wilson. So uh, as you'll notice in the rest of the presentation, we'll talk about different pathways and opportunities for students to feel supported. One of them, as mentioned, is the special education and student services, a student success program that we offer. Uh, I'm not gonna read everything here, but take a quick glance. Um, those are programs that support students uh, as they're learning um, and not just uh, when, they're, when they are struggling, yes, but as they're learning and as they need support. So one key thing about being successful in high school is for students to not be afraid to ask for help by asking their subject teacher or let them know that they're, let their subject teacher know that they're struggling. Uh, supports are there. They might not know what they are, but we certainly have many uh, opportunities for your child to be successful. So it's very important that as a parent and as a student uh, that you voice your concern when they do arrive. Learning for every child, uh, also something that we cover, the OCDSB supports equity and inclusion and offers engaging pathways for all students. Our commitment to excellence for every student supports students to become collaborative, creative, critical thinkers, innovative, and stewards of a dynamic global environment. There's something for everyone, not only in our school board, but also, uh, as I mentioned, at Kareen Wilson, there's a lot of opportunities where students can demonstrate their learning, they can grow, and they can share their voices. Uh, for this part, I will pass it over to, I believe it's Mr. Wolf, who's gonna cover this uh, part of our presentation tonight. Thank you, uh, Ms. LaBelle. Before we continue, we cannot move forward in this presentation until the one and only uh, Mr. McDougall, our head of the physical education department is introduced and introduces himself. His name was uh, a glaring omission from the previous slide for the department head. So please, Mr. McDougall. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm the department head for physical education and outdoor edu ed education and uh, in charge of all the athletics here at Kareem Wilson. It's a pleasure to be here this evening. Thank you, Mr. McDougall. And trust me when I say Kareem Wilson Secondary School would not be what it is without Mr. McDougall. Okay, high school diploma requirements. So what is your, what is your child getting themselves into when they come to, uh, when they come to high school? So the goal is that uh, they'll, they'll leave with one of three items. So looking at the slide here, starting at the top uh, left, you see the Ontario Secondary School Diploma or the OSSD as we refer to it. So to earn that, students need to um, complete a total of 30 credits. So each course they take in high school uh, is worth one credit. So they need to pass 30 courses uh, that translates into 30 credits to earn the OSSD. The breakdown of those credits is that 18 of those 30 credits needs to be compulsory credits. And those are things such as English, maths, and science. Uh, and 12 of those 30 credits need to be optional credits. So we have, we have a uh, fantastic uh, technology and design department that involves our auto shop and art classes. Uh, we have music classes, uh, as Mr. McDougall mentioned, outdoor education classes as well. So those would fall under uh, optional credits. In addition to the, to, to the 30 credits, students also need to earn 40 community hours. So what that is, is that's, it's, that's volunteer work. So students do this uh, outside the school day, outside school hours uh, for the hours to qualify for these community hours. So they need to earn a minimum of 40 
between the start of grade nine and the end of grade 12. So it's not per school year, it's between those four years of high school. And students have done a number of different things in the past, such as uh, volunteer their time at, uh, at shelters, uh, at uh, food banks, the Humane Society. So there's a lot of opportunities out there. Obviously with COVID now, a lot of those opportunities have been have been put on pause. Uh, but as uh, one of the guidance counselors here in Mr. Kirby, part of our job too is to work with students to help uh, find volunteer opportunities. And then the other requirement for the uh, OSSD is you see that the provincial literacy requirement. So this uh, pertains to students in grade 10. So this is not, this doesn't apply yet to, uh, to the grade nine students coming in. Uh, in grade 10, you'll receive lots of notification about this, uh, this literacy test. It's nothing to lose any sleep over. It's a, it's a writing test and a reading comprehension test that uh, the English department and Ms. Heemstra and the teachers in her department, they get the, the students prepared very well for this test. So it's nothing to worry about. Uh, and again, you'll, you'll learn more about it when you're in grade 10. Moving over to the far right, um, students also have the opportunity to earn an Ontario Secondary School Certificate. So to earn the certificate, uh, students need to earn a total of 14 credits. Seven of those have to be compulsory credits and you see the breakdown there of what those compulsory credits need to be. And the additional seven credits need to be optional credits as well. Okay, so again, I go back to other options that we have uh, in, uh, in, in phys ed, uh, outdoor education, um, uh, band classes and so forth. And then moving back to the left hand side, the, the last box that you see there, certificate of accomplishment. So this is for, this uh, when students uh, earn the certificate of accomplishment, this, this uh, gets them prepared for entering the work world. It can also be a certificate of accomplishment, it can also be kind of a jumping off point for students to, if there's any um, uh, programs after high school that uh, they might want to pursue, uh, their, the certificate of accomplishment can uh, be applicable for those as well, depending on the program. So what you see here pertains uh, directly to grade nine students. So we have two programs here. We have English program and we have a French immersion program. So for grade nine students, uh, they need to take a total of eight courses uh, at the, between the beginning of the school year and the end of the school year. So that translates into eight credits after grade nine. So you see there the courses that they need to take uh, are English, math, science, geography, French, physical education, and art. And in art, we have visual art classes, uh, drama, and music. Now, where their choice comes in is in the different levels in, within those courses. So I'll get into that in the next slide a little bit more, but that's where their choices come in. But essentially, when they come into grade nine, the students, um, those seven courses should be in their timetable somewhere. Where they have a choice is what you see at the bottom there. So they can choose between a technology and design class and the information and communication technology and business class. So two very different classes. So the technology and design class, um, if you're the type of student or they're the type of student who likes to uh, be on their feet and uh, get their hands a little dirty, maybe get their clothes a little bit dirty, uh, the technology and design class would definitely be uh, something that they'd be interested in pursuing. Um, it's a fantastic classroom to walk by and see the, the sawdust flying around and the kids making really cool different projects. It's, it's, it's really cool. Uh, and then the business class, it's a very different, right? So your uh, students, it's an introductory business class. So learning different uh, fundamentals of business. Um, they're working much more, more seat work. So they're uh, learning a lot of these uh, different uh, computer-based business programs as well. So uh, two very different courses uh, for uh, two very different types of learners as well. So this is where, and when I alluded to in the previous slide, students need to choose um, different levels in those courses in English and science and, and, and so forth. So there's three levels that we offer here um, or that schools offer at the secondary level. So the first one there starting on the left-hand side, you see locally developed and essential courses. So starting next year, we're gonna offer locally developed courses in English and science. So what are locally developed courses? So locally developed courses are designed to, uh, for whatever reason, student, a student might have some gaps in their learning in English or, or science. Um, maybe they struggle a little bit with reading comprehension or writing skills. Perhaps a locally developed course would be helpful because locally developed courses help fill those gaps. And they also help uh, build confidence in students and their learning. So uh, a student who, can ta who takes a, a locally developed course, um, they build on their confidence, they build their skills, and they could possibly the next year move into one of these other levels that you see here. 
So in the middle there that you see the academic and univer university courses. So these are courses offered in uh, English, math and science, uh, geography, history. So these courses focus much more on uh, deeper critical thinking skills. Um, students engage in, in, in uh, different, different levels of uh, of creating connections between what they're learning in, in any given class. So if they're taking a, an academic a science class, uh, they might be asked to make a connection between what they're learning in that class to another uh, class that they have in their timetable. So that's where the critical thinking piece comes into play. And at the in academic level courses, students should expect uh, homework as well. And then moving over to the far right, we see the applied level courses. So this is more about, these are courses are more designed for kind of college pathway. Uh, this is where students are a little bit less uh, critical thinking, more kind of concrete problem solving skills are, are uh, being utilized by students in, in applied level courses. Lots of opportunities for students in terms of uh, course selection uh, at our school. Uh, all of our courses that I mentioned before, they come at the applied level as well. Um, and for students who take applied level courses, that doesn't necessarily uh, pigeonhole them into taking applied level courses throughout high school. They can possibly uh, transition into uh, academic level the following year. And then moving to the bottom there. So when I said locally developed courses, uh, typically in the past, we've offered that at English, math and science, but I left out math because beginning next year, math is being de-streamed. So what that means is that there, for students coming into grade nine, they will not have a choice of level of math that they take. So please take note of that. Uh, there is just one math course to take. Uh, so they don't need to look for different levels. So that's all the information we have to share about that for now, but stay posted to the OCDSB website because as more information is released, uh, it will be posted there. I'd like to turn it over now to Mr. Kirby. Thank you, Mr. Wolf. Uh, this slide talks about uh, really learning beyond the classroom. And what that means in Cream Wilson is, uh, I like to highlight three activities the students commonly do. One being the shoreline cleanup, as Principal Coleman alluded to, we are quite close to the river and uh, the uh, students give it the opportunity to take a garbage bag and help clean up the shoreline uh, in an effort to keep it safe and clean for everyone who's using it. Uh, another example of uh, innovation and experiential learning is students taking the outdoor education course, they get to paddle on the river uh, during class when the river is not, of course, full of ice like it is now. Uh, but uh, the kids in the outdoor ed program do take great pride in keeping the, uh, the, the river and waterway as clean as they can uh, around Cream Wilson as, as they're using it quite frequently. And then the last project I will highlight is the, the archaeological dig. Some students uh, participate in in grade 11 with Mr. Anderson's anthropology class. Um, and that's, a, again, a very hands-on outside the classroom activity. Uh, this slide, experiential learning, talks about experiential learning outside of Crane Wilson or beyond the classroom. Uh, now, Crane Wilson doesn't offer all of these uh, opportunities, but we do offer quite a few of them. I want to highlight co-op as an example on the top left. Uh, and that's where students get an opportunity to go into a workplace and earn credits while learning about uh, a work experience. Uh, we have a, a several different uh, placements, including an auto shop or a uh, like a Hyundai uh, dealership and a, uh, a bunch of culinary opportunities, as well as some business opportunities. Uh, moving over to the middle on the top, e-learning is something we're all familiar with right now, uh, as students have an opportunity to take courses online. And then over to the right, the Ontario Youth Apprenticeship Program, or OYAP, gives the students an opportunity to earn uh, hours towards their apprenticeship in a number of different occupations, such as um, welding or um, masonry or uh, plumbing electricity. And then on the bottom left, I'll just go into a specialist high skills major. Uh, we are uh, about to launch a, a specialist high skills major course at Cream Wilson. Uh, we haven't nailed down all the details, so I'll leave that to a little question and answer at the end. Um, that's about it for uh, my two slides, and I'm going to pass it over now to Mrs. Coleman. Nope, it's me, Mrs. LaBelle. Ms. LaBelle. Thank you, Mr. Kirby. Okay, so um, as you can see, our school board offers many, many ex uh, exciting opportunities for your child to learn. 
there's also a wide range of other out of the traditional school days opportunities. So this slide kind of highlights a little bit of what we have to offer. So night school and summer school are, are programs where students can uh, gain credits, high school credits, outside the uh, regular day. We also have specialized programs that are for specific groups of students throughout the year and summer. These are credited programs for Indigenous youth, Black youth programs, as well as English language learner programs. I'm going to skip the elementary one, get back to that in a second. Literacy and numeracy, we have a lot of programs that support both those uh, in uh, allowing or supporting students to complete their uh, Ontario Secondary School Diploma. And the International Language Credit Program is something offered, uh, they call it Saturday School here because it is often uh, offered on Saturdays. It's a great opportunity for students to learn a new language or to perfect an other language other than French or English. So back to elementary school, as a grade eight student going into grade nine, there's this program called uh, the grade nine math prep. So uh, there's also literacy and numeracy supports as well for grade six to eight. But as a student in currently grade eight, going to grade nine, I would suggest to see if this program is a good fit for you, uh, that you consult with your grade eight teacher, particularly your grade eight math teacher. And they will let you know if this is a program that could help you uh, enhance your skills, better prepare you for high school, maybe bridge a few gaps that you might have in your learning. Um, and so that way you're ready for grade nine math when the time comes. Okay, course selection. How do you know which courses to pick? This slide, I would suggest as a family, you go back and review it. There's a lot of great questions there and great topics of conversations to go with. We also use this slide when we are meeting with students in our offices and guidance, as well as in grade 10 when we talk about the careers course that we offer. So it's all about finding out what are your interests, your strengths, what you enjoy doing. Uh, and then from there, being able to decide um, which courses would be best fitted for you. It's kind of neat to redo this exercise every year because your, your interests change. You might try something. For example, you might try one of the art courses, uh, maybe something like drama, and you realize, wow, I'm really not, I'm really shy. That might not be a good fit for me. So it's good to revisit where your interests lay every year when you choose your courses. There are many opportunities being offered at you, many resources, like I said before, uh, an abundance of opportunities at all at grade level. One of them will be take your kids to work day once you're in grade nine, once your child is in grade nine, they will get to spend a day where they get to work with uh, in the workplace and discover what that's all about. So it's important that as parents uh, stay com connected with the school uh, through the emails that we send and uh, the web page and students always important to listen to morning announcements because that's where we put all our important information there. So I'm going to pass it over to Mr. Wolf now. Thank you, Ms. LaBelle. Uh, yes, so Zello is the uh, is the new platform that uh, students use, um, uh, will be using to select their courses uh, for next year. And, and it also happens to be the word that uh, uh, keeps me up at night sometimes. Um, so um, Zello has replaced uh, the platform called Career Cruising, which you may have heard of. Zello and Career Cruising, the, the good thing is that they uh, they look very similar to each other. So, and also even better for from what we're hearing from our feeder schools is that uh, the vast majority of grade eight students have been exposed, have been using Zello already uh, at their current schools with their teachers. So that's fantastic. So, so most students are already familiar with it and how it works. The course selection process has not started yet. When we have more information and when that starts, the feeder schools will know. And, your, and the grade eight students will know and we'll get the course selection process underway. So no need to uh, worry about that at all. Uh, and when the time comes for it to begin, we will we'll be on it to support all the students. I'm gonna pass it over to Ms. Coleman. We invite you to go back to take a look at those videos that are on there if you want some further explanation. So again, this final, I mentioned earlier, our, our, some of our slides are pretty text heavy and there's a lot on them. This one I just want to really showcase to say that the pathway towards graduation is different for every student. You may start in one direction and then head off in another one, but the stepping stones along the way are all ways and journeys to get you there. So we will be there along every step to support students and figure out what their needs are, what their skills 
and how best to achieve the ultimate level of success for them. So we're looking forward to helping along that pathway to graduation. And the other important part, it's not just about academics, but what else do we do here at Kareem Wilson? Ms. LaBelle? Yes, I'm right here, good. So yes, at Kareem Wilson, it is really about supporting each other. So we offer, uh, once again, many programs to support your child academically as well as socially and giving them an opportunity to have a voice. So a few things here listed are, um, they're listed right here, but I think more importantly, I will have Ms. Fabro talk about our Link Crew program. Hi everyone, I'm Ms. Fabro and I run the Link Crew program at our school with the help of some other teachers. And uh, the Link Crew program is designed to support the transition from grade eight to grade nine. So the basis of the program is that uh, older students in grade 11 and 12 have the opportunity to apply to become Link leaders. And they basically are students who've expressed an interest in leadership and mentoring incoming students. And so we get this group of very keen students who are willing willing and ready to support grade nines and we train them through our leadership classes that we offer so we have an athletic leadership class and then I run a um, a link leadership class as well so we train the students and how to support the grade nine incoming students and so what can you expect for next year for your new student um, as they come into grade nine, they will be paired with two link leaders and they will meet their link leaders on orientation day. So this is usually the week, a day or two before the official start of school. Um, we invite all of the grade nine students to come to Kareen Wilson and they, uh, they will be paired with a group of about 10 other students in grade nine and their link leaders. And during orientation day, they'll get a tour of the school, they'll get their timetables, they will learn about scheduling, and most importantly, they'll start building relationships with the other, the other students in their group, but also these older uh, Link Crew students who've been in grade nine, are very familiar with what the school has to offer, um, and can really do a good job of supporting and transitioning to high school. So the support that they offer is both academic and social. If you would like more information on what Link Crew does, um, many of the students follow the Instagram handle at CDUBB Link. And so if you're in grade eight and you want to see what we've been up to, that's a great place to start. Uh, as well, this year, our Link Crew class put together the website that you see below, so cwlinkcrew.ca. Um, and this website is uh, student-written, which is kind of exciting. So the students in, in my leadership class got together to create this website that has everything that you would need to know about coming to Kareen Wilson. Uh, so there is a sports page, there is an events page, there's a clubs page, there's information on LGBTQ students um, who, for example, may want a separate bathroom. We have that offered here and the information on that is here. We have an arts page. We talk about the basketball academy. It goes on and on. So if you have any questions even about navigating the school, you'll be able to find that information on this website. It's, it's brand new. So everything is current and I'm sure that you'll find some answers to your questions there. And then uh, just to quickly touch on some of the fun. So Link Crew is definitely known within the school of hyping up the new grade nine students that come. And we're always coming up with new ways, even during the pandemic to keep the students entertained and start building those social connections, which are so important in high school. So uh, here are just a couple of examples. We do orientation day, which is before the official start of school. Um, every year we take the students to the Lusk Caves in the Gatineau Park, uh, and we have a full day with all the grade nine students in the outdoors. We also uh, support the Spirit Days and we will run many different special events throughout the year. So we look forward to having your grade nine student come to our school and be supported by the LINK program. Thanks so much. 
Thanks, Ms. Trevor. And I, I will absolutely say that uh, it is a highlight of um, most many of our students' uh, high school careers. It's one thing they talk about when they graduate in grade 12, that what they did in Linker in grade nine is what they remember and it carries on and they can't wait to become a senior student so that they can provide that same level of experience to the grade nines that they received when they came in. It's pretty powerful. And we're really incredibly proud of the work that we do with Link Crew and with all of our grade eights, grade nines coming in. So thank you again. Um, I will just wrap up before we get into the question section, just as a reminder that we, we've talked a lot, there's been a lot of information that we've shared tonight um, about some of the things that we do here. But bottom line is I want to reassure and share with you the wraparound services that we have for your student. So it really starts with the student services department, which houses a lot of these additional supports and services for our students. And the, the supports, I am gonna read this slide because it is important information to share, it is the Indigenous Student Support and Re-Engagement Coordinator that comes in regularly and meets with students. The Center for Inuit Children, Youth and Families. Learning Support Teacher, you met her, that's Ms. Muir with her team. Student Success Teacher, that was Emery Dugal, who we haven't introduced yet earlier as well, but she is here. Emery, do you wanna say hello? I'm putting you on the spot, sorry. Probably working for the mic, it's okay. So. All right, we're waving. So there we go. Um, so student success teacher, the student success portfolio per, uh, is really a, a, a huge wraparound service. Students who are either unsuccessful at the end of a, of a semester and we look at recovering that credit so they're not credit deficient. We know that students completing 16 courses by the time that they're done in grade 10 is a great predictor of being able to achieve their OSSD. So we do that credit recovery piece. We do credit rescue during the semester if students are, are struggling. So we don't wanna let them and we don't let them fall behind. And then um, some other interventions along the way. So that's all part of these, there's too many duties and challenges and successes in that student success teacher role, but it is part of the wraparound service. We also have a school social worker, um, psychological services and a psychologist, child and youth counselors, educational assistants, and a Rita Woods addiction counselor. Those are all services available to your students when they arrive here at Kareem Wilson. And we know that that does provide um, a place where students are safe, welcome, mental health is a priority, as well as academic success. So all of those pieces work together. And as you can see from that incredible team of department heads and guidance counselors and teachers, um, we are we're very committed to what we do here and very proud of the work and our students when they leave and for all the steps that they're here in between. So that is our official part of the presentation tonight. Um, Mr. Wolf, I know has been monitoring the chat and monitoring any questions. Uh, Mr. Wolf, do you have anything that we want to discuss? Certainly, yes, we have a few questions that have come in. Good. I will read them in order. So would a student uh, be able to take the International Certificate Program at Kareen Wilson if they live in Orleans, but outside of Kareen's catchment area? Um, well, the answer, the short answer to that is no. If you live, if the student lives out of the Kareen Wilson's catchment area, a student would need to register in their home school. And then um, possibly the home school has a, uh, an international certificate program. I know Gloucester High School does. Um, so that, that would be the short answer for that. I don't know, Ms. Coleman, if you wanna add anything to that. Yeah, the only addition to that would be that we are in the period of time where there is the cross boundary transfer request option. And I believe it's February 1st to the 16th. It's usually around that time period. So uh, if you have a request for a transfer that is outside of your boundaries, there is a process on the ocdsb.ca website that you can follow to request an alternate school. We will advise in advance that there aren't um, many transfers being permitted, but it certainly is a process that you can, you can go through. And if you have any questions, please call us here at Kareem Wilson and, or your feeder school and we will walk you through that. Next question is, uh, can my child get credit from doing volunteer hours. So the volunteer hours themselves are the credit that they get when they do when they complete those hours. Um, 
possibly what what happens with some students who earn a lot of who complete a lot of volunteer hours uh there is uh, when, when the time comes for them to graduate the the school does offer uh an award um but uh in terms of uh, any credit towards courses no is the short answer for that Okay, another uh, international certificate question. Can a student do the international certificate program in French immersion? The answer is yes. Uh, next question is, are there a variety of school clubs like ski club? It may be Mr. McDougall. Do you wanna to speak to Absolutely. that one from an athletic perspective? Yeah, currently, uh, Corrine, uh, given the more traditional times, we, we run approximately 30 teams. So those are interscholastic sports. But we do also offer a few uh, additional clubs, Ski Club being one of them. As well, through the Outdoor Ed program, we run a uh, rock climbing club uh, that's run through their program. Uh, but we do have other great uh, things on site uh, that's unique. We have uh, part of the uh, East End Cost Country Trail, so kids have an opportunity to learn about cost country skiing, either for just pure enjoyment, um, but it can also compete uh, at an interscholastic level as well. And then we do have other activities that run throughout the lunchtime um, in regards to more recreational play uh, for intramurals. And maybe Mr. Kirby, if you're able to pull back, sorry, I'm putting you on the spot. If you're able to put up the other Link Crew website, there is a section there on clubs. Uh, and we could just take a quick look at those well, to showcase some of the other clubs that we do offer. Uh, student Council, which is pretty amazing. And that, again, tells it gives us an idea of what students are asking. Newspaper team, we're happy to bring back the Wilson this year. Thank you, Miss Heemstra. Games Club, which meets at lunch. So all kinds of games happening up there, uh, electronic and board games. Key Club, it's an international services club, international network. There is Voices. How to make school it's kind of a pep club for lack of a better word working spirit pep club first nation metis inui and fellowship club that meets regularly international certificate program the international club as well the idea team that is our race relations group and the rainbow club our lgbtq plus community club Club of Science. Get to blow stuff up, right, Ms. Dewar? Maybe not. Math Club. Okay, so that's for, Math Club is um, also working on the university, like the Waterloo Math Contest, Pascal's math, co math Contest. And so they work together on preparing for those, those contests. So, and the key component of that is those are the clubs that we currently offer. Uh, students are always welcome to start a new initiative or a new club and working with a, t a staff member in collaboration to make that happen. And then, as we mentioned, the sports, Mr. McDougall, we offer over 30 teams, which is an incredible number, considering, considering we are a smaller school. Um, we still put as many teams on the courts and on the field as many of our larger schools in the area. So it's something we're incredibly proud of and win it also and do incredibly well. So we not just putting them on the field, but are competitive on the field. Right, Mr. McDougall? Absolutely. <laughs> All right, Mr. Wolf, any other questions? Yes, indeed. Let's keep going here. So uh, do you, does Kareen Wilson still offer the AP program? Short answer there is, is yes. The courses that we offer in the AP, AP stands for Advanced Placement Courses. Uh, they are offered at the grade 11 and grade 12 levels. And which courses we offer in Advanced Placement uh, varies typically from, from year to year. Uh, Ms. Dewar, if you don't mind me putting you on the spot, if you could explain a little bit uh, what an Advanced place, Placement course entails. Certainly. Um, it's really more like a first year university course that they can take um, if the, uh, students that are want to do a little bit of extra work and are really interested in the subject. Um, they can, um, when they take the 
advanced placement course, they have the opportunity in May of the year of which of their grade 12 year to write an exam. Uh, I think the exam is three hours long, just like a university exam. And it's scored in levels. And if you get a high enough score, uh, depending on the university and the program, every university and every program uh, differs a little bit, but generally, um, Canadian universities, most will, will take the um, AP scores if they're high enough. Um, and they, students can earn either a university credit in that subject area, first year university credit, or an elective credit, which is really helpful um, to lessen their load and to, you know, university courses are expensive. There is a cost to the exam as well. But that sums it up pretty much. And uh, students don't have to write the exam if they don't want to. If they just want the the um, enhancement then in learning, then then that's fine as well. Thank you, Ms. Durr. One of the uh, uh, kind of a sub question to that is uh, how do you uh, how do you explain how to get into the AP program? So, uh, Ms. Dewar, do you want to comment on that as well, please? We really keep it open to anyone who wants to try. Um, normally, it's students that are, like I said, are interested in the particular subject and are interested in, um, you know, doing learning a little bit more than they normally would in the university uh, stream. Um, we we don't cut it off to, marks wise. Generally, um, the student probably wants to enter uh, if they if they sign up for an advanced placement course generally they want to probably be in the 80s or 90s but um, you know depending it, it, they 70s it depends on the student really and and what they're interested in and um, you know I've seen students really turn it around in their grade 11 and grade 12 year and 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 really flourish in the advanced placement program so um, it's really open to whomever wants to try it. Thank you again, Ms. Dewar. Um, another question here is, when do we pick our grade nine courses? Well, you pick your grade nine courses when your grade eight teachers tell you it's time to pick your, your grade nine courses. So as we were saying earlier, uh, right now, the, the course selection process is, is, is on pause, but it will be happening within the near future and you'll find out more information from your teacher. One thing I did not mention earlier that uh, is very important to, for you to know, for parents as well, is for students, if you're questioning what level should I take, this seems kind of confusing, talk to your teachers, speak with your current teachers and ask them um, uh, what they think as well, because they, they know you well also as, as learners and your skills and your abilities and so forth. So speak to your teachers as well. Mr. Wolf, I'd just like to add to that because I know there will be some anxiety. Um, we are significantly later this year in asking for course selections from our grade eights and all of our students at Kareem Wilson currently. And that is due to our current pandemic schooling model. Um, there's a lot of unanswered questions at the board level um, and at school levels in terms of what next year is going to look like. So until they have a comprehensive answer on that, when where everything is kind of on pause. So if we were to guess, uh, I would think we'd be looking at late March before students in grade eight will be receiving their course selection sheets. So it is about six weeks later than normal. So please don't panic if you've got older siblings that have come through these doors before and you're saying, well, I know we did it a lot earlier before. And yes, you did. So we, we are on it and uh, you will get that information as soon as we're able to provide it to you. Time for a few more, Ms. Coleman. Sure. Here's one for you, Ms. Coleman. Does hockey coaching count for volunteer hours? It is if it's unpaid and it's outside of school hours. And that's pretty much pretty much the standard for, for volunteer hours. Okay, here's another one for uh, either Ms. LaBelle or Ms. Coleman. For students who might live out of boundaries, what is the main factor at play that might prevent uh, a cross boundary transfer? Is it that they live too far from the school, the school is full? What are the factors? Well, I'll answer that. Um, the way that cross boundary transfers are determined is actually dictated by the board. So the board uh, looks at schools to see what their maximum capacity is and their current student enrollment. And they let us know how many students we may be able to accept. Uh, this year, I know we have a zero transfer cap policy. 
So only in exceptional circumstances uh, will students be provided an opportunity to attend Kareem Wilson. Okay. Where could, <clears throat> excuse me, where could we find a list of clubs and sports teams at Kareen Wilson? Uh, so that information can be found in two places. Uh, one is if you go to the homepage of our school website, the student council has made a fantastic uh, video that uh, highlights all the, uh, the clubs that uh, are running currently. You can also speak with uh, the, uh, the grade eight schools. They have that information as well from presentations that myself and Mr. Kirby gave to those schools uh, last week. And I'll add that new website that we just showcased tonight and we put in um, brand new. Today is the first day of our domain name. So that is now as a link on our CW website. So you can check that out as well. Okay. If a student starts out in French immersion and feels like they would prefer to change to English, how is that handled? Mr. Kirby, you want to you wanna handle that one? Yeah, I can jump in on this one. Uh, so it's really a, a conversation that needs to happen between the teacher, the student, and the parent, of course. Uh, we look at how the student's uh, doing in class, if uh, we can accommodate the student. And then uh, after the teacher, student, uh, parent, and hopefully guidance counselor that's involved, make the decision that uh, a different level may be more appropriate to the student's learning. Uh, that's at the point in time where we make the decision there. But it is a decision that's made uh, amongst a number of people. But Russell, can, uh, can I add to that as well, that even if you choose to leave the French immersion stream, it doesn't mean that you need to leave French. Um, if you say you choose to leave French immersion in grade 10, we still offer grade 11 and grade 12 core French classes. And certainly living in the nation's capital, where French and bilingualism is a focus, that is something we would strongly encourage if it works with the student's timetable and their needs. Um, Madame. Madame Coulomb, do you want to maybe speak, um, I'm putting you guys on the spot, on, toward, on the DELF? On the DELF? Yeah. Yeah. DELF is a, uh, a French diploma. Um, it measures the uh, fluency uh, in French. It's a, um, a diploma that is uh, recognized uh, around the world um, in more than 140 countries. Um, and uh, I know that the uh, CIEP, who is the uh, organization in charge of that diploma, uh, had um, uh, many discussion with the um, Canadian government um, and make it um, like the equivalent of the uh, exam that they are, uh, the, the people in the um, public commission are doing for their uh, fluency certificate. Um, so the school board is offering that. Um, and it's a great, great um, asset for the student. Uh, if they decide to travel or um, to study in a different country, um, this is a great diploma um, to have uh, to study in a different country. If you want to study in French or um, um, subject related to uh, French languages. Uh, and it's different from the uh, immersion certificate, which is recognized only in Ontario. And it's, um, and the certificate is not a uh, measure of the fluency. That's, it just tell, it tells that the student took like the 10 credit in French when they were in high school. Um, and what is different with the diploma, the DELF, it's a measurement of the fluency. So you get a level of fluency with that diploma. Thank you. Okay. Uh, when choosing courses and their levels, can you have a mix? Uh, absolutely, you can. So for example, uh, a student might uh, be very interested and in strong in science and that would probably, it sounds like they might be more uh, uh, apt to take uh, academic level science. However, maybe math is a bit of a, a, bit of a struggle sometimes. Um, so you can take the applied level math uh, uh, in the same year. Uh, it might even be in the same quadmester or, sem or semester as well. So the, the answer there is absolutely you can, yes. 
Um, when can high school students take summer credit courses? So uh, I'm going to assume that question means like, when can you register for summer school? So that information typically comes out to guidance counselors uh, somewhere between mid April and the end of and early May. And at that point, uh, then we can, we know which courses are available for students to take. We share that information and then students can make appointments with their guidance counselor to uh, be registered for, for summer school. Actually, Russell, I'll, I'll, uh, I interpreted that a little bit differently. So okay. I think we're going to cover both areas when I answer this. Uh, if students, once they've graduated in June from grade eight, they can take grade nine summer school courses right that summer. So you can, often we see students will take a geography um, in the summer before starting to school, and it gives them a little bit more room as they get into their later grades, grade 11 and 12. It's also the summer between grade eight and grade nine is um, also an opportunity to start community service hours. So you don't have to wait until you start on that first day of grade nine to start your community service hours. And ideally, I would highly suggest that um, you get those community service hours completed by the end of grade 10, takes your stress off when you're in your senior grades. Oh, you're on mute, sir. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Kirby, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bounce another one back at you. Uh, what is the expected grade uh, average uh, to enter universities? Uh, that's an awesome question. It really depends uh, to some extent on the program you're applying for. I would say in general, what we've seen in the, in the past few years is if you're applying into the Faculty of Arts or Social Sciences, you're looking to a high 70, low 80 average. And if you're looking to uh, apply into a faculty like commerce, engineering, or pure science, you're looking at a low, low to mid 80s range. Perfect. Thank you. We're going to take maybe about two more, two or three more questions, Mr. Wolf. And then anything that is still outstanding, we will follow up with an FAQ afterwards. Okay. Another one for uh, administration. How many, typically, how many cross-boundary transfer students are taken uh, each year? Right now we have a zero cap. So we don't, we're not permitted to take them except in exceptional circumstances. So I can't really answer that question. It's very individualized um, based on compassionate needs, but typically none. Okay. Um, is there a flow chart to illustrate, to, to show the different programs and requirements for each one? Uh, yes, there is. The feeder schools, again, have that information. And guidance counselors, myself and Mr. Kirby, we have uh, that information as well that we typically on a daily basis go over with students and parents as well. But for, for you right now, the, uh, the feeder schools have access to that information. Yes. I believe that's the last one, Ms. Coleman, Ms. LaBelle. Great. And I'll open it up to our department heads for any last comments, if they have found that something was missing or needed to be added this evening before we close off. And if not, just give me a thumbs up and we will wrap it up. Wonderful. All right. So, Again, I, I want to express my sincere appreciation and gratitude to Mr. Kirby. Um, like I said, we've had to learn a whole new set of skills this year that I didn't anticipate. So Mr. Kirby, um, thank you very much for doing this for us tonight and being behind the scenes and still being able to answer questions as we threw them out to you. It's very, very much appreciated. And Mr. Wolf, thank you for putting together the slide presentation and some additional slides. We will forgive you this time for missing Mr. McDougall. Um, you may have to pay for that at a later time, but you guys can sort that out. But uh, thank you very much for all the work that you did for in preparation for tonight. And heads team, thank you for being here. I know um, some of you are at home, some of you are here still at school, and I appreciate you giving your time and Ms. Fabro for sharing all the amazing stuff that we do with our grade nines coming in. You are an incredible team. I'm very appreciative, very proud to be the principal at Kareem Wilson. And I can't wait to see your students here next year. We know what we offer. And uh, after working in a number of schools in our board, I won't say they were the best, but we are. So we're looking forward to seeing all of you and have a wonderful night. Please stay safe, everyone, and reach out to us if you have any additional questions. Thank you. Good night.